something really crazy that caught my attention a couple days ago. Um, I had asked all the Team Keep It Clean patrons uh, a question. And shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons, by the way. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravingviz. And if you don't want to, that is A-OK. But anyway, I had asked all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. I said, now that the offseason is officially here, it's officially here for everybody, because this was the day after the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. I said, what are you guys' plans? What, what do y'all got planned for the offseason? You got any nice little vacations? Anything you planning on doing or whatnot? And, of course, we shared some of those answers in the latest episode of Question from Subscribers. But then I got a comment after we had already edited that video. And a little while after everybody had answered, uh, a Team Keep It Clean patron by the name of Dion, he said this. He said, hey, Graven, congratulations on the new baby girl, Raven. Hey, I, and I appreciate that, by the way. Uh, he said, I just wanted to put in the thought about the 2023-24 Baltimore Ravens team. Now, listen to this, because let me just let you listen to it. He said, I think this team made awesome strides and, okay, and we'll, we'll break it down piece by piece. So he said they made awesome strides, which they did. They did. They won a playoff game. We saw all this advancement in the passing game. We saw the running game do his thing. We saw this, like, elite defense this historic defense especially in the year 2023 that's amazing to see a defense like that it's beautiful to see so they definitely did make strides but anyway continuing he said uh, and it reminded me of the 2011 team that was supposed to go to the super bowl but the pats put an end to that trip and as we remember that team uh they were a really good team and yeah they were a, a, a field goal kick Actually, I mean, if Lee Evans would have held on to the ball and it didn't get stripped from him, it was not a drop. If it didn't get stripped from him by Sterling Moore, then, yeah, Ravens are on their way. But, of course, the Sterling Moore, he made a great play on it. And then Billy Cundiff. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, Billy Cundiff. That was that game. Um, but that kick would have sent the game into overtime. We knew he was going to make that kick, and we knew the Baltimore Ravens were going to win that game if they went to overtime, but neither of the two happened. And since he missed the kick... That ended up canceling out overtime, and that put an end to the game, and that was a wrap. That still, for me, that is the most heartbreaking Baltimore Ravens loss ever. More than this loss against the Chiefs, more than the, the Colts game, I mean, excuse me, the Bengals game, the 4th and 18, more than any, lo any loss, more than 2006, even though that, like, ooh, <laughs> that was just, that was frustrating. Because, like, how can we not score a touchdown? But anyway. That loss to me, that was the worst Baltimore Ravens loss ever. Because, again, they were right there. And the thing that the big difference between that game in 2011 and this one in 2023 or 24 is that the Baltimore Ravens, they, they weren't not being themselves. They, they, they didn't lose their identity in that game. So they were in it. They were fighting. They were right there. I, and I feel like they were a lot closer in that game than – the Baltimore Ravens of this last playoff game against the Chiefs were. But anyway, let's continue because we get into the good part. He said, um, but in 2012, the Ravens turned around and had another great season and went to the Super Bowl. So I have great hope that we will return next year ready and prepared for the run of a Super Bowl. Be positive. I'm going to relax and enjoy the offseason and grave and enjoy your summer peace. Now, I appreciate that. Shout out to Dion, by the way. Now, um, with that. With what he said, it reminded me of this Baltimore Ravens team because, like he mentioned, we were supposed to go to the Super Bowl. Like, all oh, y'all know, we were supposed to go to the Super Bowl. We were supposed to have been there because we had this crazy coaching staff. We had full of a lot of people with some great experience. And, and the coaching staff turned around a lot of players. They really got the best out of a lot of players. We weren't just talking about potential with a lot of these guys. Some of these guys still got some potential. But for a lot of players, potential was being pulled out of them, and they were, like, they were getting it. They were making it happen on that field. The, the, the personnel, the, the players that we had, the team that we had, the roster that we had. And to think about it, how well and well established this roster was because so many guys went down with injury throughout the course of the year, and some came back, some didn't. But – the Baltimore Ravens were still balling. They still continued to do their thing. And the reason I bring that up is because they, that means they had quality depth. They had a lot of quality starters, but they had a lot of quality depth because their depth got tested and it passed the test with flying colors. So, um, and, and hey, just real quick, real, real quick little update. Shout out to my guy, Meech. Uh, he sent me this because I hadn't even seen it. The Saints are interviewing Keith Williams to be their wide receivers coach today. He was the assistant wide receivers coach in Baltimore the last three seasons. 
ties to New Orleans as he was a Tulane wide receiver coach from 2012 to 2014. So, <laughs> getting ready to possibly lose another coach. So, yeah, that's funny, huh? Anyway, waste, wasted season. Anyway, um, but I say all that to say this. This year was supposed to be the year. That year in 2011, that season was supposed to be the year, but it wasn't. AFC Championship, the Baltimore Ravens lost, and it was very unfortunate. And one of the big, something that's kind of, it's crazy. It's crazy when you really think about it. I always say this. I feel like the 2011 team was better than the 2012 team. I feel like the 2011 roster, they were better. They were stronger. They were tougher. They, they, I just felt like they were better than the 2012 team. That, that's just me, though. But I felt like they, they were a better squad. But 2011 squad didn't win it. The 2012 squad did. And fast forward to this season right now. That 2023 team that, oh, goodness, man, like, ooh, that team that we just had stacked. Oh, my good stacked. That, that was a team right there, man. Dog, like, we, we had it stacked. And even with all the injuries, even with everybody that went out. Oh, man, imagine if they were all healthy, but obviously they weren't. But still, this team we had stacked. And we got a lot of guys that could possibly leave. You got Patrick Queen. He could possibly be going. Justin Matabike is technically a possibility, but he ain't going nowhere. Ravens ain't about to let that happen, will they? We'll see. But um, you got cornerbacks like Darby, Arthur Millett. I know some people a little wishy-washy on him, depending on the situation. But, uh, you, again, we ain't got to go down all the, uh, the pending free agents because it's like 23 of them, I think. But... For this next team that we have up, we don't know how they're going to look yet. It's obviously way too early. Free agency, we ain't even close to free agency yet. But I would uh, think that the 2024 team, they might not be as, I can't say as talented, but I don't know if they're going to be able to stack up to that 2023 team. Especially you, you got Lamar's cap hit going up. Roquan Smith, he getting his. Uh, Kyle Hamilton, first round pick, his ain't increasing by no crazy amount or anything like that. But, again, m money's going up. Some big contracts are going up, mainly Lamar Jackson's. So you ain't going to have as much money as you did. You can still make stuff work. But I, I don't think, and it ain't being negative or anything like that, but I just I find it hard to see how this next team could be as good as that team was now we still expect them to be good but how stacked this 2023 team Ooh. <laughs> again they gonna have some nice players now don't get me wrong but it's gonna be tough to compete with that one but I, I say all that to say that just because the team isn't as good as it's possibly not as good as the previous one was it doesn't mean that they can't get the job done it doesn't mean that so with all that being said Hopefully, hopefully the Baltimore Ravens can learn a lesson from previous Baltimore Ravens, teams of the past, well, just that team of the past, not a lot of other teams, because, yeah, they, a lot of them fell short. Um, but hopefully they can look at that 2011 team and be like, man, they, they, they were supposed to be it. They were supposed to be in that Super Bowl, but they came up short. But then the next year, they got it. They got it. So we looked at this team this year and said, hey, they, they were supposed to get it, but they ended up coming up short. But hopefully next year, they'll get it. They'll get it. Now, um, something that's interesting um, that I, I really uh, appreciated. Shout out to my guy, Josh Hoffman, because I saw this on Twitter. Uh, because somebody was saying that um, the Ravens have to get their retribution next season. And me, I feel like there's really no such thing as retribution. There's no such thing as revenge. For this season, because this season is done. That's it. That's it. Like straight up. That's it. You're you're done. It's done. Chiefs are the Super Bowl champions. That's it. So, uh, but anyway, he continued and said, I really hope the 2024 Ravens lean on the 2012 Ravens for motivation down the stretch. So to look back at them and be like, oh, you know what? We should do that. 
But my guy Josh Hoffman said, I hate the motivation narratives as a general rule. What did the Chiefs have to motivate them all these six years that they weren't given the trophy on week one? So basically what he's saying is that, hey, these Chiefs, that, what motivation did they need? They've been winning. They've been taking care of business. They ain't got to look back at no old teams and be like, oh, no, we should take it from them. No, no, no. Chiefs been getting that job done in a couple of different ways. On uh, Some ways we don't approve of. But anyway, the Chiefs, bottom line, they've been winning. And they've been doing a lot of winning. So with these Baltimore Ravens, while I did say that it, it, could, be, it could be a crazy thing because that it is a possibility that that could happen. It's a real possibility. Now they, some stuff got to change up top and underneath too. But it is a real possibility that the Baltimore Ravens, they do what the 2011 Baltimore Ravens did. Well, they came up short the first year. They were right there, but they came up short. But then the following year, they finally got over that hump so we'll see how that goes i know it is still a scary thought um thinking about how the ravens have been and, and why they've been coming short and falling short uh with those humps but um let's just hope for the best i love y'all team keep it clean make sure you subscribe, subscribe to the channel turn notifications on and leave a like on the video because uh, it helps out a ton and you know <laughs> We can use all the help that we can get, but the Baltimore Ravens, they can certainly use all the help that they can get too.